You got to put a lot more money down if you actually are looking to cash flow. I was the business owner. What could I expect as far as revenue? $20,000 of monthly net income on that one home. People running this just for the profits. We can actually control things a lot more when there's just less residents in the home. I didn't even think of that side of it how you got into real estate and why assisted living. I actually kind of grew up with a real estate family. My dad had always been a real estate investor doing all sorts of different things. But about 14 years ago, my grandmother fell, broke her hip and needed care. When we went, she was in upstate New York at the time. So when we went to look for somewhere that was suitable for her, every place was like disgusting. Him having that background in real estate, he said, wait, 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 wait. We're gonna be paying like five, six grand a month for her to live in this home or we could own the home own the business she could live for free and we could be cash flowing like 10 grand a month without having anyone there to like help us or guide us along the way he purchased his first residential assisted living home with the intent to move my grandmother in and we started working together from there so you started with that first one how many of these homes do you have right now so now I have three here in the Phoenix Scottsdale market and then we invest in other people people's all across the country because we train so many people how to do this of course i get great deals that come across my plate so now we're yeah. kind of into the private lender sector as well i've heard about residential assisted living and like how good the numbers are and then i also heard the horror stories i think it got a really bad rap during covid and everyone was yeah. sick and then like all that stuff when you think about stuff like that like covid was beneficial for us in the ral industry not assisted living right assisted living's had a bad rap and that's due to history neglect abuse and people running this just for the profits in regards to covid 97 percent of covid cases that happened in assisted living have happened in big boxes, only 3% in RALs. We can actually control things a lot more when there's just less residents in the home. Let's say I did own a house yeah. and I was running it. I was the business owner, but what could I expect as far as revenue or actual profit after paying all the expenses of the employees and everyone else that's in there to run it? Throughout the country, the national average to live in a care home right now is 6,700 per person. If it's $6,700 a month times 10 residents, you're bringing in 67,000 every single month to run the home with your staff, your food, electricity, cable, you name it. That's probably going to run you around 35,000. Your debt service, your mortgage might be like 12,000 a month. So that's leaving you with $20,000 of monthly net income on that one home. One of the challenges many real estate investors like myself are having, especially right now, a couple years ago, you could put 20% down on pretty much anything and you'd cash flow. Right now, that's not the case. You gotta put a lot more money down if you actually are looking to cash flow. Even when you're looking for a home, your criteria is gonna be a little different. Yeah, there's really four ways you can get started. One is what you're thinking right now, converting a single family into an RAL. The second mm -hmm. way is buying land and custom building from the ground up. Third is leasing a home to use for this. And then the fourth way is to buy an existing RAL. I just talked to somebody yesterday who had operators sign a 12 year contract with them with increases every single year. All they're doing is basically being the landlord for this business. In that way, you're buying the real estate and the business so you're up and running cash flowing day one. I didn't even think of that side of it. Basically buy a house with the intention of renting it out to an operator at a higher cost, but you can go in and fine tune it so it meets whatever their criteria is. This type of business qualify for like an SBA loan? So a lot of people will use the SBA um, to fund no matter which of the four routes, because even if you're going to create the business, SBA is interested in that. SBA is a fantastic way to fund this type of project, as well as private money, hard money, syndication. Those are pretty much what everybody else is using outside of SBA.